his part of the bargain. He came into the studio in October. Three new projects on the go. Standing Stone, a symphonic orchestral tone poem, a biography, many years from now, and a new album, Flaming Pie, from which comes this. The song we're singing from the new CD by Paul McCartney, and Paul McCartney is my very special guest today. Paul, good morning. Good morning, Michael. This has taken a while. <laughs> many, <laughs> many <interview>. years, really. <laughs> I promised you years and years ago, and I've finally come good. Is it so, Paul, or not? Well, it is. It depends what you want to call me. You know, I'm, it's a sort of huge honour, and I'm, I love it. Um, but I generally get called Paul McCartney still. I suppose it's because my professional name is... I, it wouldn't look right on a record, I don't think, you know. Flaming Pie by Sir Paul McCartney. <laughs> Seems better. But, um... No, I think it, it's been misunderstood recently. Some people have been saying, oh, he just wants to be called Mr. Really, what it was for me was, I'm still intrigued to find out whether you automatically lose the title of Mr. when you get the title of Sir. I've, I'm looking into it as we speak. Because... To me, the, the title of Mr. is sort of hard-earned, working class, you get it, you know, when you're 21, and I love it, I, I, I like it a lot, um, so I'd like to think that you could retain it and still be a sir. <laughs> At the same time. Um, I don't know if it's allowed. I think that's having a cake and eating it. It might well be, in, in which case I'll have to um, just still use it, I think, I'm, I'm, I have to be a rebel. Did you ever imagine that it would be Sir Paul McCartney? I mean, was that an ambition when you were younger? Did you dream of that? I think, you know, I've always had such a good imagination that I kind of dreamed of everything. St standing by the bus stop, reading room at the top, uh, you know, and just sort of waiting for the sports car with the blonde to go past kind of thing. Yeah, I came from a place in Liverpool. Where the last house I lived at in Liverpool was called Allerton. And I did always think, Lord Allerton. Sounded great. But in truth, it was just my imagination running away with itself. I never actually thought it had happened in a million years. What were the practical ambitions of that child in Liverpool? dreaming away about the bus stop. I mean, what did you want to be? Um, it involved money. Bec it? Yeah, because I was, you know, raised mainly in a place called Speak, which was quite down at heel, and still is, actually. Because um, my mum was a midwife, so we'd always get moved to the frontiers of Liverpool, you know. The roads were, were not built. Um, but I saw, in looking around at my neighbours, that the problem was money that they always argued why they fell apart, why their kids had to go away, or something. Money was the big central problem. So I, I didn't know what it was I wanted to do. I didn't really think it would be music, um, but I knew it had to involve money, so that at least if I got married, at least that part would be taken out of the equation. And then I might have a good marriage if I was lucky, but I wanted to remove that evil money problem, you know, that was going to wreck the marriage before you started. So the lure of, of the music and industry in those days for you then was what, fame and fortune, basically? It was, it absolutely. Was, it was yeah. Exactly yeah. That. And in fact, it's funny that it's changed. I, in fact, I'm not so sure it has, actually. <laughs> I think we just, we, we assume it's sort of changed. I think uh, when we started, no doubt about it, you know, we, it was, it was to get out of having to do a job and commit ourselves to some sort of profession that was going to uh, you'd be like a millstone round. We all felt that. We all felt we wanted to be in something sort of um, a little. It, the Beatles, which was a phenomenon, the like of which you've never seen. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's a remarkable, uh, almost divine intervention involved, isn't there? It's a, it's a very strange thing. And I'll tell you what. Also strange is was national service, as you will recall, yes, sir. was the thing we were all looking at. Yes. I was certainly due to go in in a couple of years, and, and John being older than me was, um, and Ringo being older than both of us put together. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, was. But suddenly, to talk about divine intervention, the national service stopped, and I maintain you wouldn't have had a Beatles. Had it been for the National mm. Service, we would, well, we would have all just not been Good in the same thing. area, That's right. in different uh, you know, regiments or whatever. Yeah. And, because um, Elvis, if you remember, went in the army and we thought it ruined him anyway. <laughs> you know, yes, sir. Or, sir, he was calling him on sir after that, you know. It was just, it seemed to tame him too much. Much like the rebellious streak to him. Yes, him. I, think it, I think it did. And I think also, I don't think we would have met up again. Mm. Four lads in Liverpool. I think, you know, we would have gone our separate ways. So, it is quite strange, really, that uh, it happened in the way it did. Now, all of this is, is, is set down in this, this very good book called Many Years From Now, 
which uh, Barry Miles has, has written along, along with you. And it's, it's your story, it's your side of the story. We'll, we'll, mm. we'll talk about the reasons for doing the book in, in just a moment. But, but I'd like to talk to you now about the, the new piece of music that uh, you've composed. 